a very specific type of ensemble method is dropout. It's also an extremely popular method in uh, modern deep learning as it's very simple and efficient and in many cases for many models also quite effective. So the idea of dropout is that during training we create an ensemble on the fly by setting neurons to zero with some probability, typically 0 0.5. Consider this example here on top. This is a, a simple multi-layer perceptron where we have the inputs at the bottom and the outputs at the top. Now with probability 0 0.5, we're removing a neuron, which means that we remove all of its incoming and outgoing connections. So here on the right, we see the neurons that have been removed and therefore the connections that have been removed. So this can be expressed with a binary mask. We have a binary mask, it's basically a binary vector, as long as we have overall units in our multilayer perceptron or other type of model that we consider. And this mask changes randomly with every iteration during training. Every iteration during training, we are randomly drawing with probability 0 0.5 if a neuron is active or if it is removed. Right. And then we do the backward and the forward pass or on this simplified model. And then the next training iteration, we remove a different set of neurons and we do a forward and a backward pass. So effectively what this does is it creates an ensemble on the fly from a single network with shared parameters. Before, in the classical ensemble methods, the parameters were not shared, but here the parameters stay the same. It's just that in some cases, a neuron with its parameters participates in training and in some iterations, it doesn't participate. A nice thing about this is that the ensemble that is created is exponentially large. It, uh, it grows with the number of training iterations because we are, we are um, with very low probability drawing exactly the same model from this ensemble twice. A model or an element in this ensemble or a member of this ensemble is one particular mask uh, vector, one particular binary mask vector, one particular constellation of dropped out neurons. This is one model in this ensemble. So why is this a good idea? Um, so here's our example from before. Uh, first of all, this dropout technique forces the network to learn a redundant representation. So it's uh, another way, effective way of regularization. Um, the model has to be redundant because it cannot rely on certain features to um, make a prediction because these features might be dropped out in a particular forward and backward pass. So it must learn, it must represent information uh, in a distributed and redundant way in the network. And therefore it reduces the effective model capacity, right? So we need, um, and this is maybe the downside of this technique, we need larger models and longer training. But at the same time, we gain generalization performance. One Another aspect why this is a good idea, another intuition why this is a good idea is that it prevents co-adaptation of features. In uh, classical deep learning, as we've seen before, units can learn to undo the effect of other units. Yeah, so you can create a, a zero value by having one unit responding um, highly and another one responding uh, very low and then combining them. So um, this co-adaptation, which is actually um, something unwanted because it's not a real 
um, effect that we want to model um, can be prevented by dropout because if we randomly drop out neurons, um, then the representation that the model learns must be robust to this. It cannot rely on some specific neurons being active in order to change the effect of other nearby neurons. This is called um, co-adaptation. And um, another reason why this is a good idea is that it, in contrast to these ensemble methods that we've seen before, it, as we will see, requires only a single forward pass at inference time. So why? Um, let's first look at the problem at inference time. Well, dropout makes the output random because we have this random mask. So formally we have, or we can, rep, we can write this um, dropout model as a neural network with parameters W, which depends on the input X, but also now on this binary mask C that specifies zero and one, which neurons are active and which not. And this is our prediction, right? So C is a binary mask with one element per unit drawn ID from a Bernoulli distribution because it's binary, where CI equals zero if neuron I is removed from the network, right? So this is the, prop, the dropout probability. At inference time, we then want to calculate the ensemble prediction, right? That's also what we did before for the ensembles. Before it was a small number of K ensembles. Now in this case, it's actually intractable because the number of ensembles is exponential in the number of neurons. For M neurons, we have two to the power of M um, terms in this expression here, right? Because this C um, creates, like the, the sum over all possible Cs creates this exponential growth in the terms of this expression here. So we can't, we simply can't calculate the ensemble prediction by averaging. So what do we do? Let's consider a simple linear model, which you can think of also as one layer in a neural network, an affine layer. So the linear model can be written as such, so it's a linear model with two inputs, two weights that produces an output F parameters W of X. Now we can write the drop out equivalent as FW of X comma binary vector C um, as CWX plus CWX, where C is ever zero or one, depending on if this connection has been dropped or not. Now assume mu, this dropout probability to be 0 0.5. During training, what we do is we optimize the expectation over the ensemble, right? So we're optimizing this expectation over all possible combinations of binary mask vectors, each with probability one over four, because we have in this simple case here, four possible combinations of C1 and C2 taking value zero one. So what is that? Well, in the case that C1 and C2 are both zero, we get zero. If C1 or C2 are zero, but not both of them, then we get um, even this expression or this expression here. Right? And if C1 and C2 are both one, then um, we get this expression. Now we sum them all up multiplied with the probability of occurrence, which is one over four, because we have four different events. And um, we, uh, if we sum all of these up, we obtain one over two, because we have W1, X1, both here and here, and W2, X2, both here and here. So we have one over two, W1, X1, W2, X2, which is one half of the original FW of X. So with this little argument, we can see that at test time, when we do inference with the entire model, where we do not apply any dropout, what we can do is 
in order to make a uh, approximately correct prediction is to multiply the trained weights with the or by the uh, dropout probability mu. Because what we did during training is we predicted one half f, which means that the weights must be twice as large in order to attain the same value. Now, if the weights are twice as large as they should be, we simply need to divide them by two, in the case mu being 0 0.5. As a little remark, this weight scaling inference, this is what's called weight scaling inference, because at inference time, we need to scale the weights to take into account that we have done this dropout during training is only an approximation for nonlinear models, but it works quite well empirically in practice. Here's an example of what this does. So here's, this is a simple autoencoder. We're going to talk about this type of models later in the lecture on MNIST with a single hidden layer of 20 of 256 relus. And what is shown here are the activations of these units. It's a feature visualization. And on the left, we have a standard autoencoder. On the right, we have this autoencoder drained with dropout. And we see that on the left, we have a lot of co-adaptation. There's a lot of noise here. There's a lot of units that respond because there's other units responding and they need to undo their errors, etc. On the right, we have much less co-adaptation and we are having features that are somewhat more meaningful that appear in different places in the image and that react to different kinds of input signals. And therefore the model on the right leads to better generalization. Now, this can be also seen from this plot. This is test classification error on this uh, data set where these last two models have used drop, dropout in combination with some other regularization techniques and uh, um, lead to improved performance compared to um, not using the dropout um, ensemble technique. <clears throat> 